Hi, I'm Karen Newman. I came here from West Virginia. Um, I don't have Which a going? fancy <laughs> PowerPoint, <laughs> just a few talking points. Um, I took the title to this panel literally, uh, Utility Myths. And I thought about one of the biggest utility myths that they tell us. And it's that the regulatory process is too hard for regular people to participate in. So let's think about this. What is regulation? Regulation takes the place of competition in a monopoly construct. Utilities are a monopoly that must earn a regulated franchise in the state. If they're not doing what they're supposed to do, they shouldn't have a franchise. Regulation exists to protect consumers, not utilities. Utility, reg uh, utility regulation is a private club designed to keep you out. So how many here in this room, before they had a transmission line proposed for their neighborhood, knew all about the State Regulatory Commission? <laughs> MISO? See, now, um, without new transmission issues, consumers usually remain blissfully unaware and uninvolved in these processes. So the regulation is created by and for the utilities. They're used to operating in their own little club of the regulators and the regulated. And there's a revolving door that goes around and around <coughs> in that building. The recent intrusion of regular people into their process has upset them greatly. <laughs> so once you do participate, you can't be ignored. What they want you to do is participate in the public comment process at the PSC. They'll have an evening hearing and you can all go and say your two minutes and the judge sits up there and makes notes and you think, is he really writing down what I said or is that his grocery list? <laughs> because he doesn't look very involved. And, and one time I actually went to a hearing and the commissioner argued with the person at the microphone. They're not supposed to interact with you at all, but he did, he got aggressive. So anyhow, upset their apple cart participate in the entire regulatory process, not just that little piece that they've designed for you. Intervene. Focus on maybe just one small winnable issue. Just pick one little thing that they said that you want to disprove. You don't have to cover the whole thing. You're not a big corporation. You may not have a lawyer. Do your research. Find out everything you can about your little issue. The discovery process. Participate in the discovery process. You can ask the utility for documents. You can say, what did you mean by this statement in your testimony? Anything you want to know, because we all have questions that are unanswered, right? Ask them during the discovery process. They have to ask, uh, they have to answer you, or the judge will make them answer you. Cross-examine their witnesses at hearing. If you're a full participant, you should be able to cross-examine their witnesses. Ask them what you want to know. Look at their testimony and say, what did you mean by this? And you may ask the questions that somebody else wouldn't ask. You'll ask the regular person questions, and that's what everyone wants to know, and sometimes that changes opinions. You want to get the best witnesses possible for your side if you've intervened. Well, sometimes we just can't afford to pay expert witnesses. So you can be your own expert witness. Who knows your property and how this project affects you more than you? So create your own testimony and file it and then be available for them to cross-examine you. Chances are they probably won't want to cross-examine you. Um, at the end, there's briefs. And you think, oh, briefs, what is that? That's scary. Well, actually, it's not that scary. It's just uh, using the evidence to support your contentions, and you tell the commission how you want them to rule. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be big or involved. You can cite the law, but sometimes people don't even do that. But don't underestimate the power of a well-written brief to change minds. So be present during the regulatory process. Force the utility to acknowledge your participation and engage with you. If you ask them questions and you file testimony, they can't just ignore you. They kind of want to ignore you, but they're afraid to ignore you. So then you get them, they're, they're, they're uh, participating at your level and doing what you want them to do. So, now I'm going to talk about a few other utility myths. These are things that drive me crazy. We need new transmission for renewables. No, we don't. Demand is flat. 
these new renewables they want to build the transmission for, that's new generation. And this new generation, since we don't really need new generation, is supposed to be um, getting rid of old generation, old dirty generation. So what about the existing lines that that old dirty generator was using? What's, what's going to happen to them? The truth is, Big Wind wants to overbuild transmission to fit with the maximum capacity of their projects. And they want the ratepayers to pay for it. The actual capacity from the wind farms is probably much lower than the nameplate capacity. They don't produce as much. But the wind doesn't want to be curtailed. They want to have a, ho a highway for that entire capacity that they might generate 10 hours a year. So it, it's kind of like building a 12-lane highway because traffic backs up once a year. Another problem with that is corporations and municipalities that pass renewable energy goals. But they don't want to pay the cost of them. They want the rate payers to pay the cost of meeting their goals. So we have a system here. If new generation wants to connect to supply electricity for somebody, they go to the Regional Transmission Authority. Here it's MISO. And they say, hey, we got this generator. We need to connect it. You know, we need new transmission. Well, MISO studies that, and they come up with a plan. And then they tell the ratepayers they have to pay for it. However, big wind, that's big money. They're corporate entities. So they don't want to pay for it. They want to export to another region. They don't want to just send it around MISO, because that, that's MISO's job, is to provide for this region. They want to export it to PJM, where they can get more for the power. So therefore, they want to export it. MISO is, shouldn't be interested in that. So the RTOs serve their own region. They're not interested in exporting. And the funny thing is, PJM isn't interested in importing either. It's just the companies that want to do it. In PJM, where I'm from, on the East Coast, we'd rather build our own renewables, offshore wind, other things that we're doing in our own communities, and keep our energy dollars at home. OK, here's a different myth. The ISO, or RTO, MISO, is omnipotent. They say we need it, therefore we need it. They make a lot of mistakes. Historically, their numbers have been way past conservative. But who wants to question them? And then the lights go out. Certainly not your state utility commission. But you can give your state the power to say no. Here's something we realized in PJM, years after the fact of when we really needed it. But I was doing a, a case at the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and I had a PJM executive on the stand, and I was cross-examining him. And I asked some question about, well, what happens if we don't build a line, the state denies a line you say is needed? I mean, did the lights go out? He said, oh, no, no, no. In our operating manual, we have a provision for that. If a state denies a project, then it goes back here to PJM, and we have to come up with a different solution. And I thought, man, that's easy. And here we've been struggling all these years. And I looked it up, and it's there. And I've given it to other groups on the East Coast, and they've been pushing PJM to, you know, this isn't your only solution, and that, yes, the states can say no. So there may be something like that in MISO's operating manual or bylaws or something like that. So that might be something to check into. Uh, we've also engaged PJM. We have told the people, the, the RTO, they, they're omnipotent. They sit there in their little office. They don't deal with people like us. They just tell the utilities what to do, and they push the utility out there to fight with you. And they don't want anyone to point the finger back at them. So in PJM, we have pointed the finger back there. We have done it in media. We have done it with legislators. We have made them meet with us. We have made them answer our questions, provide us with documents. They don't like being on the hot seat. So engage and question the ISO. Here's another myth. More transmission equals more reliability. We're going to build a transmission line for some other purpose like renewables, but it gives you so much reliability. But, but that's reliability I didn't need. You know, it's, uh, here it's going to give you extra benefits. Well, I didn't need them. So the most reliable system is one that is located as close as possible to where the electricity is used. We probably all knew that. Transmission just adds more points of failure. It's not more reliable. 
Transmission needed for other reasons may not add enough reliability that we really don't need. Okay, here's another myth I've seen a couple of times recently. The media comes out and says, landowners had input into this project. No, they didn't. The landowners were urged to follow the utility script. They went to the open house one-way information flow meetings where the utility tried to divide and conquer them and get them to push the route off onto their neighbor. The utility doesn't really listen to you. They just pretend they do. But then they can go to the media and say, well, here's our route, and the landowners had, had uh, input into it, and they participated. So this is a landowner-driven solution to, to what we need. Well, we didn't need the project in the first place. This happened recently with a, with a group in Pennsylvania, Maryland, I'm working with called Stop Transource. They went to the open house meetings and they told them, we don't need a transmission line. And then a couple months went, went down the road and they came out with their route and they said, we're going to put it on monopoles. The landowner said they would rather have monopoles than lattice structures. Everyone said, we've never discussed that. But in the media, they looked like they were bending to the will of the community. They you know, look at us. Okay, here's another myth. Eminent domain is necessary for all utility projects. That's just the way they think it is. Well, eminent domain may have been necessary to bring electricity to everyone in the last century. But most projects now are not about bringing electricity to customers who don't have it. And some of them aren't even about reliability anymore. So listen to today's reasoning to use yesterday's authority. They talk about renewable expansion and market efficiency. So I challenge you to question the use of eminent domain so that others can have cleaner power or cheaper power. It's gone way past the original provision of service that it was intended for, but the utilities are trying to stretch their eminent domain power to apply to clean energy or economics or speculative get-rich schemes like merchant transmission. And here's another little thing. I saw it once and I thought it was a one-off, and then I saw it again from a different company. Someone else sacrificed it right away for you, so you need to do the same for them. <laughs> I'm sorry, someone sacrificed it right away so I could have electricity. Now don't ask me to sacrifice it right away so someone else in a city far, far away can save three cents a year or feel good about consuming green power without making any lifestyle changes. So. In conclusion, I challenge you to think outside the box, examine the utility and ISO claims, develop alternatives, simplify and distribute your own talking points. And I'll talk more about this this evening when I'm on another panel. Your talking points have to be very simple. Three words in a picture, one sentence, something that anyone can understand exactly what you're saying. You, you pound it endless, endlessly. You keep saying the same thing over and over again, and you think, oh boy, I sound like a broken record. But you keep doing it, and eventually the community at large will start repeating your message back to you. Sometimes one or two good short messages may be all that's needed to completely destroy a utility proposal. So I challenge you to act, don't react. Thank you. <laughs>